Gemini, what is going on with you? Come on in, have a seat. Make yourself comfortable. My name's Alan from UnknownTruthTarot.com. Welcome back to another Gemini love reading. Now, if this is your first time here and you have questions that you want answered about your romantic love life or your relationship, then start now by subscribing and clicking the little bell icon. That way you always get notified anytime I post a new Gemini Tarot reading for you. Now let's get on with this Gemini love reading today because today we are going to take a look at the status of the love connection between you and your romantic person of interest. I'm going to do that by getting one card to represent the mutual point of interest or like the shared energy that's affecting both of you here in October 2022. Then I'm going to get three cards for you Gemini, three cards for your person. And then I'm going to clarify everything with the second deck, just to make sure we can get down to the bottom of the unknown truth about what's really going on in this love connection of yours. So let's get started on this Gemini love reading today. I got too much stuff, too many crystals. I don't think there is a such thing as too many crystals. But let's get one card for what is the mutual point of interest between Gemini and their romantic person of interest here in October 2022, please. Let's get one card. What's the mutual point of interest? Okay, let's get three cards for you, Gemini. What's going on with Gemini as it relates to their romantic person of interest and the connection between them for October 2022, please? What's going on with Gemini? Well, you're shooting them all over the place. What do we got here? Okay get three cards for your person. What's going on with Gemini's romantic person of interest as it relates to Gemini and the connection between them for October 2022, please? Let's get three cards. What's going on with Gemini's person of interest? Okay. All right. On the bottom of the deck, the overall energy of this reading is the Six of Pentacles. Six of coins. Coins and pentacles are the same thing. This deck calls them coins. The other deck I use calls them pentacles. So you might hear me flip those terms around. They mean the same thing. The six of pentacles is Taurus energy. This is a card of balance. It's about generosity or reciprocity. Like you scratch my back, I scratch your back. It's like an energy of things being balanced and of equal give and take here. Now, on the flip side, the negative aspect of this card is sometimes it can represent the merchant giving to two. I don't see anything out here that's even hinting in that direction yet, so we'll leave that off for now. But this is about balancing the connection, like if something's going wrong, it's trying to balance it out. <clears throat> or if this, this could just be telling me that this connection is balanced. I do have an Ace of Wands right here. This is looking more like trying to balance something out. This is... It's a new beginning, it's an ace. So this is the spark of passion and desire, like re-sparking the connection between the two of you, firing the connection back up. It can represent sparking up a brand new connection, a passionate new beginning somewhere. But that doesn't really fit with trying to balance something out. I do have the Four of Cups right under that. This is Cancer Energy. This is usually about being emotionally discontent, like not being fully happy with what's right in front of you to the point that you're daydreaming about this other cup, this other thing that you believe might bring you happiness and fulfillment. A lot of times this will represent that there has been a love offer made. It's on the table right now in this connection. And that cup of love hasn't been accepted. It hasn't been rejected yet. It's just kind of been left hanging in here in the air with nothing really being done about it. Possibly trying to make a decision about that. I have the Ace of Swords next. This is the Sword of Truth. It's the Sword of Clarity. It's also the sword you would use to make a decision with. The, the word decision, the Latin word that word comes from, literally means to cut off. As in, there's options here. Do I accept this? Do I not accept this? This is cutting off one of those options so that there's only one option left, which is in fact how you make a decision. This can also be the sword that you would use to sever a relationship with. It could even be the sword you would use to like cut away something that's not in balance so balance could be restored. This is the overall gist of what it's going to tell me in this reading. It looks like we have a love offer on the table here, either about a brand new beginning with someone new, or re-sparking a connection and trying to balance a connection back out if it's not someone new. So it looks like I'm going to have two distinct storylines going on here. One of them will resonate for you, the other one may not. So 
that's the overall gist of what the reading is going to talk about. This mutual point of interest is shared energy that affects both of you here in October 2022, Gemini. Shared energy is justice. This is the Libra Major Arcana card. If this is a card of balance, this is the Mac Daddy. This is the most powerful card of balance in the whole deck. It's about doing the right thing, the fair thing, the just thing. It's about severing something that's not in balance so balance can be restored and then the right, fair, just thing can happen. Like what's supposed to happen can happen. Now sometimes just the fact that the card is here can indicate that something unbalanced is going on, something unfair, something unjust has occurred and there's a need to balance it out. So let's take a look at this. Let's clarify this and see what we can find out. Tell me more about justice, please. Why is justice the shared energy between Gemini and their romantic person of interest in October 2022? Okay, so we're taking an extra card here. No problem. On the bottom of the deck, Knight of Wands. Now I'm starting to get the picture. This is the second fastest moving knight in the deck. This is a very fast forward moving energy. It's about rushing forward and taking some rapid passionate action on something there's a lot of passion and desire for. A lot of times this will get called the player of the tarot deck because it can be that bullshit wishy-washy in and out back and forth can't stay in one place for too long kind of an energy. It can be someone who rushes in passionately and gets what they want from you and then they rush somewhere else passionately and get what they want there and they can even come back and forth and try and play two sides of the same fence. Sometimes this can just represent someone is really gung-ho about something and they're like hauling ass in the direction of doing that, possibly balancing this out. Some, sometimes this can represent someone who's like super gung-ho and then for some reason they pull back and then they go the opposite way with it and then they're gung-ho again and then they pull back again. It's like non-committal kind of an energy here. So it could be that's the unfair, unjust thing that's going on that needs balanced out. Someone could have been playing two sides of the same fence and had a passionate new beginning somewhere else. Could be that. It could be someone has a lot of passion and desire here, whether that's you, Gemini, or your person, and they're wanting to rush forward and do the right, fair, just thing here in this connection. It could be that. I do have the Wheel of Fortune right underneath that Knight of Wands, so this is divine timing. So this can represent the wheel of fate, the wheel of destiny. It can be a fated event. This can represent a change in the luck and fortune. It could be, hey, we had some wishy-washy bullshit going on, and now that's coming to an end. That's changing, and we're going to start a new cycle here that's a lot more balanced. Again, overall energy and shared energy is a card of balance. So it could be we're trying to balance something out. Balance something out in this commitment here. This Hierophant card is the Taurus Major Arcana card. I guess I didn't tell you, but the Wheel of Fortune represents the four fixed signs of the Zodiac. Leo, Taurus, Aquarius, and Scorpio. This is the Taurus Major Arcana card. This is a card of commitment. About being in a committed connection, a committed relationship. Taking it to the next level. This would be a marriage card. Like taking it that far, having plans for the future of that. Page of Pentacles is planning for the future. So it's possible that we had some wishy-washy bullshit going on, and that is coming to an end here. So that's good news, if that's what, what it is. To clarify justice, I got the Eight of Swords, the Eight of Pentacles, the Ten of Pentacles, and the Moon. Okay. This Eight of Swords is Gemini energy. This is thinking about something a lot. It's about being like stuck in your head thinking about something over and over on like a repeating loop in your mind and not being really sure what's the safe step to take here. Not wanting to make a mistake and do the wrong thing and end up getting hurt by one of these swords here. So it's like not being sure what to do and you can't quit grinding on it and you're feeling like stuck and trapped and blocked about what is the right thing to do here. Can this be balanced out? Can this not be balanced out? Like can we start a passionate new beginning here, whether this is a new person or re-sparking the connection here and probably having a decision to make about some love offer that's on the table already. It's what it's looking like. Being stuck in your head about it, probably because at some point in the past, the person was wishy-washy with you, maybe even was a player. Next, we have the Eight of Pentacles. So I have two eights in a row here. 
The Eight of Pentacles is Virgo energy. This is a card of work. It's about putting in the work on something, putting in the time, the effort, and the energy on something to get what you want. Or at the very least, having the willingness to put in that work, that time, effort, and energy on something. Probably trying to balance it out. Like the way this is laid out on the table, justice is directly above these two cards. So it's like trying to put in work on balancing something out. And at the same time, one of you is worried about and thinking repeatedly about can this even be balanced out? I have the Ten of Pentacles next here, more Virgo energy. This is most people's goal in the physical 3D reality. It can indicate like wealth and prosperity and like having a massive amount of that. But in love readings, this is usually about people combining their lives together, like intertwining their lives. This is usually a card of people who live together or who are married or who are at the, at the least going down the path toward that. It's possible that we had something unfair and unbalanced happen while we were living together or at least heading in that direction. Potentially player activity, somebody giving to two something unfair occurred during that time but now there's this desire to rebalance it to put the work in to fix this ten of pentacles it could be that final card we have is the moon this is pisces major arcana this is fear and worry and anxiety but it's usually fear worry and anxiety that comes from uncertainty not being able to see the full path in front of you when the moon's out it's dark outside you can't see very far in front of you so this can be that uncertainty of like, am I still on the right path? Was this even the right path for me to begin with? Did I make a wrong turn somewhere? Having some uncertainty and that uncertainty causing fear, worry, and anxiety. Now on the negative end of this card, it can represent something is being hidden in the dark or there's some secret being kept that you don't know about. It's even possible that that's a piece of what we're balancing out here could be trying to come to have an uncertainty about whether this connection can be balanced out and whether this is even the right fair just thing for you this could be that there was a secret being kept at some point and we had some player activity and somebody giving to two and somebody started a passionate new beginning somewhere but apparently that has changed and now there's this desire to have a cycle of commitment and taking things to the next level and planning for the future to do that. I think what happened is we probably had some bad stuff going on here. Yeah, we definitely did. We definitely did. Holy shit, we did. Yeah. Okay. I'm skipping all of this for a second. We have the sun here and we have the two of cups here. The sun is Leo Major Arcana. It's the, it's the happiest card in the deck. It's happiness, joy, bliss, harmony. The Two of Cups is a love connection between two people. It's I breathe you in, you breathe me in. We're connected. But it is a two, so it represents a choice of some kind, either in the connection itself or a choice between more than one person. The sun can also mean something getting illuminated, you know, like it's the card that comes immediately following the moon in the sequence of the major arcana. So when something's hidden in the dark, the very next step is the sun comes out, shines its light into the darkness and exposes what's there and you can see it for what it is. So it could be a case that this connection had a lot of happiness to it at some point. And something went wrong and it could also be the case that something got exposed about another person here so it could be either of those things here but the cards that I skipped like right behind this commitment and planning for a future of commitment I have the Queen of Swords this is a feminine air sign energy this is usually Libra energy however you are an air sign it could represent you I am I have the Queen of Swords out here in your energy already so very highly likely that this is you. This would be speaking the truth on something and then cutting off the things or the people that are no longer in your best interest here. A lot of times for me, this represents severing a relationship. I've got the King of Swords next, which is the counterpart to this card. Now, most of the time, if you get like a King and Queen of Cups or a King and Queen of Pentacles or Wands even, that would be a power couple. That would be counterparts, like two cards that are supposed to be together represents two people that are probably supposed to be together. But in the case of the swords, it represents two people that used to be together. So definite separation here. I see this for sure with these next couple of cards, these next three cards. I got the five of swords here. This is Aquarius energy. This 
fives are conflict. So this is a conflict in communicating, a conflict in the truth, a conflict in thinking. This at its core is a mentally and psychologically painful situation or event. It can be bitter words being spoken like a big fight where you're using your words like weapons against each other. This can be someone having a winning at all costs mentality like, hey, I'm going to get what's important to me. And if you get hurt in the process, well, sorry about your luck. I'm taking care of me first. It could be that type of a person. This can be a betrayal of some kind. So I see plenty of hints that something sketchy went on at some point here in the past. That's why there's a need to balance this out. That's why there's the thinking in circles about it. That's why there's the fear, worry, and anxiety about it. Right behind that five of swords, I have the five of pentacles. This is Taurus energy. This is abandonment. This is about being abandoned, being cast aside, being left out in the cold, kicked out. This is a breakup card. <clears throat> it's looking like you guys potentially lived together at some point or or were going that route had plans to go that route in the commitment this would be like you had it i'm done with this crap and i'm out and you leave or the, the other way around you could be kicking them to the curb or they could be leaving in some way but that was definitely the case i have judgment next this is this is a major arcana card about a final decision being made. So in a love reading, this is a decision about are we going to call this relationship dead and over with or can we resurrect this and bring it back to life and transform it so that it's never that way again. It's possible that there was a judgment made over all of this and there was an abandonment and one of you either left or got kicked out. And that's the decision that happened. And underlying all that is the connection being a source of happiness in and of itself and a power and a connection there, an emotional connection there. But it could also at the same time be something got exposed and what got exposed was a choice between more than one person. Wow, that's, that's a lot of shared energy here. It's not uncommon at this stage in the reading that I can't make full sense of this, that I don't know exactly what this is telling me yet. That usually doesn't become clear until I go through your energy, Gemini. Once I come through your energy, then I'll be able to see how this relates to you. I'll come back to this again when I go through your person's energy. That way I can see how it relates to them. But this shared energy definitely affects both of you in some way. It just may not affect you both exactly the same way. And I won't know until later. But in your energy in this connection for October 2022, Gemini, we got the Five of Wands, the Seven of Pentacles, and that Queen of Swords I already showed you. So the Five of Wands, this is Leo energy. Again, fives are conflict. I've seen, well, three of the four fives, and that Hierophant card we just saw is the five of the Major Arcana. So it rules over the fives of the four suits. This is a conflict in desires where a piece of you wants one thing but then at the same time another piece of you wants something different than that so it's about two different pieces of you pulling in the same direction potentially more pieces of you than just two you're pulling yourself in multiple different directions in terms of what is it that you really want tell me more about this five of wands please why is the five of wands here for gemini okay calm down why is the Five of Wands here? Thank you. Taking an extra card again. All right. On the bottom of the deck, Queen of Pentacles. Okay, the Queen of Pentacles is Capricorn energy. This would typically represent an Earth sign, if not Capricorn. It can also represent the description I'm about to give you. The Queen of Pentacles is half of the equation that builds that Ten of Pentacles that we've already seen, that maximum stability and abundance and the combining together of two people or two families and all their assets and resources. She's half of the equation that builds and manages that. She works together as equals with the King of Pentacles to create the Ten of Pentacles and to keep it running. So this would represent like a wife figure or a mother figure or the the stable committed person that i'm building my life with or that i intend to build my life around i'm getting way ahead of myself here but in your person's energy i have the ten of pentacles and the queen of pentacles as their last two cards 
I've got the Ten of Pentacles in both decks. I've got the Queen of Pentacles in both decks. And I have not seen hide nor hair of the King of Pentacles or the Three of Pentacles, which would be about that teamwork and collaboration and working together as equals. I don't have that. So this tells me that you guys are not physically together, which is probably what we're trying to do here. Try, someone's trying to balance this out and re-spark the connection and has potentially already made a love offer on that. And what we're waiting on is the decision to get made. And it looks like the decision's not coming fast, coming really slow trying to balance all this out yeah right under this queen of pentacles i'm taking this to be you we have the knight of cups knights are action takers and cups are about love and emotions so this is actions toward love and emotions like coming forward with a romantic offer like offer in that cup of love romantic gestures trying to move forward with a love connection advance a love offer advance a love connection probably toward you and then there's the two of wands for you. This is Aries energy. This is a crossroads. It's a fork in the road for you. It's a decision point for you about which path, which of these two paths leads you to the world that you really want. And which path do you have to leave behind in order to get there? It looks like you're going round and round and back and forth about can we or can we not balance this out? Are the secrets that they kept over with or not? Uh, are they still giving to two? Did they sever this other person? It looks like a piece of you probably wants to try to balance this out with them. And then another piece of you is probably really stuck in your head and worried about it. So fearful of what could happen. Yeah, three of cups underneath this two of wands. This is cancer energy of reconciliation. It's about being reunited and celebrating. It can sometimes, though, represent... A third party love scenario because there are three cups of love in the picture here have the lovers right under that that's the gemini major arcana card this is a powerful love connection at least from your point of view i do want to make that clear a lot of readers will try to tell you that the lovers card means twin flames it has absolutely nothing to do with twin flames a long time ago before this card was called the lovers it was called just love not Twin Flames. And a long time ago before that, it wasn't called Twin Flames. It was called The Choice. So this card is really about our interconnectedness with other people and that the choices you make have an effect on the people that you love and that you are connected to. Vice versa, their choices and their actions have an effect on you. This can represent a powerful love connection. This is supposed to be divine feminine and divine masculine energy. Now, this is showing up in your energy. So this is not like the universe is beaming down the message to me that you and this person are absolutely 100% supposed to be together, your twin flames, divine counterparts, all that stuff. That's not what this is saying. What this is saying, because it's showing up in your energy, is that for you, this is a powerful connection. You feel the power of this connection. Now, because it used to be called the choice, it often indicates a choice in a powerful connection like this. A lot of times it can even be a choice between two lovers or just some choice. And I definitely see the choice here. I've got the two of wands, the choice about do we reconcile? But then again, there was a third party. There could have been a choice between more than one person here. It looks like you have a physical, tangible opportunity presenting itself with this Ace of Pentacles. This person has probably approached you and wanted to fix this, wanted to balance it back out, wanted to reconcile the situation. And they're giving you the physical opportunity to do this. It's just there's the cup hasn't been accepted or rejected yet. It's you're waiting on this decision, and the decision is moving slow. So it looks like this is your choice and that they have presented an opportunity to you. Yeah, I have the Seven of Pentacles next, which is the next card for you, I'm going to clarify. So I'll get to that in a minute. It looks like a piece of you wants to balance this out because of the power of the connection, but then another piece of you not quite so sure. To clarify that Five of Wands, I have the Three of Swords, the Ace of Wands, the Page of Wands, and Death. Okay, 
Three of Swords is Libra energy. This is heartbreak and sadness, usually from a third energy. Now, I want to say that third energy is not always a person. And when it is a person, it's not always a romantic third party. It can definitely be a romantic third party. I've seen plenty of hints along the way that something like that potentially went down. This could also be nosy friends or nosy family members or neighbors or co-workers or anybody that's not you, Gemini, that's not this person sticking their nose in it and creating some kind of a problem that causes heartbreak and sadness. That third energy can be a whole lot of things besides just a person. Like working too much can become that third energy. Anything that we do enough of is going to start carrying its own energy. Going to school can carry an energy. Partying too much can carry an energy, an addiction, all kinds of different things. Like if you're going to ask the question, well, could so-and-so be that third energy? Yeah, fill in the blank with whatever. If you're asking that question, that could be the third energy. It could be distance. It could be all kinds of stuff. But I do see the potential that there, there was potentially another person involved here. Hence, you're being pulled in multiple different directions. can't quite decide whether or not to put all your effort into this. Next, I have the Ace of Wands. We already saw that here, right under this card of trying to balance things out, or potentially the merchant giving to two, the merchant being your person in this case. This is a passionate new beginning, a new beginning in passion and desire. This could be trying to re-spark the connection after this heartbreak and sadness occurred, after whatever this third energy was, whether that's a person or something else. And you being internally conflicted about whether or not to re-spark it, potentially you might have another person that you have met now. And this offer has now been made to you by the previous person. And you're like, I, I, mm, I don't know here. Page of Wands is next. This is news and messages and communications about this passionate new opportunity. Passionate messages, communicating passionately back and forth. This is also the Minor Arcana version of The Fool, which is normally about just like throwing caution to the wind and saying, screw it, I'm just going to go for it, I'll figure it out as I move. Like, I'll jump off the cliff and I'll worry about growing wings on my way down. This is a way more toned down version of that. This will not just throw caution to the wind, but this is someone who has the drive and the determination and the willingness to take the very first steps down a new path towards something there's passion and desire for. So it feels like there's a piece of you, at least, leaning toward taking the first steps down this path toward re-sparking this connection, or potentially taking the first steps down a new path toward a brand new connection here. I can't rule that out yet. Final card to clarify the Five of Wands is Death. This is the Scorpio Major Arcana card. This is an ending. This is something dies so that it can be either replaced with something new or so that it can be reborn again in a new way. This is usually a very painful transformation process. So if you think about when a caterpillar goes into a cocoon, it ain't having a party in there. It's not fun and games for the caterpillar. It's dying. It's dissolving. It's coming apart. And when it comes out of that cocoon, the caterpillar's dead. The caterpillar's no more. It's been replaced by something else. It's a beautiful butterfly when it comes out. So it's that concept of like going through that painful transition period, that painful transformation, but when you finally make it out the other side, being better than you were before this happened. This can also represent that you have some new blessing that's trying to come into your life. And that new blessing doesn't have any room to fit in your life because something else is already occupying the space the new blessing fits into. And the thing occupying that space is in fact already dead. It just, you haven't let it fall away yet to make room for the new blessing that's trying to come in. So again, I have another indicator that says you might have a passionate new beginning somewhere else. You might have this offer to balance it out, but then at the same time also have a passionate new beginning somewhere else which could be telling me what this four of cups is about this could either be that this person has offered you a cup of love and you haven't said yes or no yet or it could be that while you're contemplating that you also can't get off of your mind the other cup that you have now got an opportunity for here in some passionate new beginning notice there are three cups in the front here that three of cups 
is yes, about being united and celebrating, we're reunited and celebrating, but it can also represent a third party thing because there are three cups of love there too. So take this however it resonates. I've been noticing a lot in my general collective readings now, but my channel's growing so fast, I'm getting like multiple messages try to come through at the same time, it seems like. So take it however it resonates for you. Central to your energy, Gemini, Seven of Pentacles. We saw that on the story on the bottom of the deck. This is Taurus energy. This represents a period of time of like pause, and reflection so this would be like you taking a pause to reflect and take stock of this connection take stock of the whole situation you're finding yourself in and what you're doing is looking at all the seeds that have been planted between the two of you and you're trying to decide is this ever going to grow into the ten of pentacles that i really want this is here in the shared energy so this affects you is this ever going to turn into that is it worth me putting in all my time effort and energy and all this work into this or even reinvesting into it or is this a spot where this is never going to pan out the way i want to maybe it's just time i cut my losses and move on yeah trying to think about that cup and then should i cut my losses and move on so this just represents that period of time where you pause to reflect and ask yourself those kinds of difficult questions here probably why i'm seeing you in this five of wands state where you're internally conflicted like part of you wants to balance it out and another part of you thinks that that's probably a dumb idea tell me about this seven of coins please why is this seven of coins here okay thank you Bottom of the deck. There's that Knight of Wands again. We saw that when I clarified the shared energy when I was trying to figure out what is this that needs balanced out. Wishy-washy in and out bullshit. Like player energy. Non-committal. Like gung-ho one minute, pulls way back, goes the other way the next minute. Can't make up their damn mind on what it is that they actually want. Related to commitment. See, I've got the Hierophant card, the card of commitment, Taurus Major Arcana. This is a marriage card. This is like taking the relationship and making it a fully committed one and then going to the next level with it, either culminating in or leading to marriage. But then there's this non committal energy right in front of it. So this is probably why you were taking stock of it. They probably behaved that way in the past and potentially even brought someone else into the connection. And now you're taking stock of it. Like now it might even have you in this like one minute you want a commitment with this person and the next minute you're like, I don't know about all that. There's the planning for the future. Again, page of pentacles. This is news and messages and communication of that physical, tangible opportunity we saw with the ace of pentacles that came out for you that's the ace of pentacles he's carrying right there this is for me usually planning for the future and it's really hard to plan for a future in a commitment like a real commitment when there's this in and out back and forth energy whether that's you or them or a combination of the two it could have been them in the past and now you're undecided because of that when I clarify this seven of pentacles, this you taking time to reflect on all this and figure out, is it going to turn into what I want? And should I work on this or not? Four of cups, ace of cups, king of swords, ten of swords. I got too many swords already. I got a sword in your first column. I got two swords in this column. I got a sword in the shared energy. I want to see cups, not, not swords. And even this Four of Cups is an energy of being emotionally discontent, not fully happy with what you have right in front of you. What you have right in front of you is Three Cups. So whether that's the idea of you reconciling with this person, there's a piece of you that's not fully happy with doing that. Or whether this represents that they brought a third cup of love into the picture with you, you're not really digging that either. But there is... A cup hanging here what's hanging here is this ace of cups that comes next like a new beginning in love and emotions or starting over from square one in terms of love and emotions and you contemplating that offer and still haven't decided 
yes or no. It's just kind of hanging here in the air. I think the reason for that is because of the heartbreak and sadness that you were put through the, the third energy, whether that is another person or not. Next is that Ace of Cups. It's laying right next to the Ace of Wands. So again, this could represent with this person starting over at square one in love and emotions, re-sparking the passion and the desire and the connection. Or this could, for you, represent that you have an opportunity in communications about passion and desire with someone else, a new beginning that you've started with someone else, or at least the opportunity to do so. Next, we have the King of Swords. This is Gemini or Aquarius energy. This, this is a very smart, logical, analytical, conscious mind thinking kind of a person. It's someone who is a decision maker, but when they make their decisions, they're emotionally detached during decision making. They don't consult their emotions. They don't consult their intuition. They push all of that off to the side. Doesn't mean they don't have emotions and intuition. They just aren't listening to it. I don't want to hear from you. Sit down and shut up. I'm going to look at the truth and the facts of the matter. I'm going to look at what's right in front of me. And I'm going to make the best, most logical, most rational decision available for me based on what I can see right in front of me. Sitting right next to this page of wands, the communicating about passion and desire, that also that willingness to take the first steps. It's almost like a piece of you has the willingness to take the first step down the path with this person and another piece of you is going, are you stupid? Did you see what they did to you? Did you see how all this worked out? You're not stuck in your head grinding on it for no reason. They hid something from you. They had secrets. They were probably sneaking around and doing dumb shit. At the very least, they hurt you. So this is that conscious piece of your mind who doesn't give a shit how you feel or what your intuition says or how strong the connection is. This is the piece of you that points out the truth and the facts of the matter and says, quit listening to that stuff unless you like getting hurt. Decide with your brain, your conscious mind. And when that piece of you speaks, it's Ten of Swords. What's laying next to the Ten of Swords is death. Ten of Swords is a swift painful ending to something. It's an ending that you probably didn't see coming, hence the swords in your back. It's an ending in betrayal, hence the swords in your back. You got stabbed in the back. That's what the king of swords is screaming at you. And right beside it is death. Two cards about an ending. Two cards that are saying, this is dead and over with. But shared and central to this whole reading is this energy of balancing it out, something unfair, unjust happening that needs balanced out or paid for in some way. Like Final card in your energy for October 2022, Gemini, is the Queen of Swords. Again, that's twice now I've seen the King and Queen of Swords. I physically have both of them on the table in your energy here. When I saw the Lover's card, that was buried under the bottom of the deck, the story in the bottom of the deck, pretty far down. Same when I saw the Two of Cups, pretty far down. This is telling me that at this point, you are much more in tune with conscious mind, logical, rational thinking, looking at truth and facts and what you can see. You're much more leaning that direction than you are leaning the direction of like, let me just do what what my heart tells me here. You're, you're much more head over heart decision making right now. This Queen of Swords is the I don't take no bullshit queen. She is fair, but she knows what's going on around her. She sees what's happening around her. She's fair enough that she will offer to let someone tell their side of the story. Speak your truth. But she already knows the truth. So the truth you speak to her better match the truth she already knows. Or she uses that sword to cut someone's head off. This is the off with your head queen. So she's about speaking the truth on something and then cutting off the things and the people that aren't in her best interests anymore. She's usually the severing of the connection for me. Especially when the last card I looked at was the Ten of Swords, a swift, painful ending to something and death setting right beside it. Tell me about the Queen of Swords. Why is this here for Gemini, please? Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
Good grief. Yelling at me already. Bottom of the deck. There's the Queen of Pentacles again. That's the second time I've seen her on your side of the table. And like I already told you, that is the last card on your person's side of the table. This is the mother figure, the wife figure, the stable, committed person that I'm building my life around, building my life together with as equals. But again, this far into the reading, this many cards out of the deck, and I still have not seen a hide nor hair of the King of Pentacles. So that tells me in this connection, when it was together, you were present. You were in here putting in the work. You were contributing to this being together and combining lives together. And you were carrying your weight. But your person wasn't showing up the same way that you were. They were probably wishy-washy and in and out and couldn't make up their mind what direction they wanted to go in. Yeah, I've got the Seven of Pentacles right under that. That's the card that I just finished clarifying for you. This Taurus energy of this period of time where you're reflecting on this relationship and this situation, trying to decide, is it worth continuing to put all this work and effort into? We're reinvesting in this. Or should I just cut my losses and move on? Because it's never going to turn into us working together as equals. I'm always going to be stuck here by myself building it alone. Yeah, and right past that period of time of reflection, I have the Six of Swords. This is Aquarius energy of moving forward into calmer waters. It's about leaving the rough, choppy waters of your past behind you and moving forward toward what you want. Like at its core, this is about moving away from that five of swords that we saw, that mentally and psychologically painful situation, like the betrayal, that winning at all costs type of a mentality, the fighting, the arguing. It's about leaving all of that behind and moving away from the pain and forward toward what you want. There is an implied choice that comes with this card, though. And the choice is, hey, that painful thing has already happened. There's nothing you can do to change that now. Your real choice is, do you carry forward into the future with you the burdens that that painful thing caused you? Or do you carry forward into the future with you the lessons that that painful thing taught you? That way you never have to worry about a repeat of that negative type of a situation again. So this could be a couple of things. This could be about, hey, what happened in the past, we're going to leave it in the past and we're going to move forward together and learn from it. That could be what this death card is talking about, like coming out the other side better than you were before. This could just as easily, and what it actually looks like based on what I'm seeing here, is you saying, no, you caused me pain and burden. You weren't working together as equals with me. You were too wishy-washy. You probably did some stuff that shouldn't have been done to me. And I'm leaving the burden of you in the past. And I'm moving forward into my future carrying the lessons I learned from this situation with you. I'm carrying those lessons forward with me. But you ain't coming with me, buddy. Again, there's the opportunity. Ace of Pentacles. A, a physical, tangible, physical 3D reality opportunity that you could touch. This is the, the seed that has the potential to grow into this Ten of Pentacles that we've talked about that's here in the shared energy. It's also central to your person's energy. This is the seed with the potential to grow into that. It's not that in and of itself. It's going to require work and time, effort, and energy to get that. And in this case, it's going to require balance. This could be an opportunity to balance it out, but this could just as easily be this person has presented you an opportunity to balance it out and you've gone through your contemplating and you're deciding to cut this and move forward, leave it behind. And you could have a new opportunity somewhere else. And if that new opportunity somewhere else hasn't happened yet, it hasn't been given to you yet. That's because the dead thing, this other person is still occupying the space this opportunity fits into. And you just haven't let it fall completely away yet to open up room to receive this opportunity. It could be any of those. That's clearly the choice that you're at, though. Two of Wands, Aries energy of a fork in the road, a crossroads in your life, a crossroads in this connection with this person. It's a decision point. What world do you really want for yourself? And which of those two paths 
gets you to the world you want and which of those two paths do you have to leave behind to get there so again another reference to leaving something behind now when i clarify this queen of swords which is usually speaking your truth and cutting someone off the first clarifier the lovers in reverse four of wands queen of cups now i don't read reversals and i'm sure at some point during this reading you've seen me just automatically flip a card right side up and not even think about it when i'm doing it i don't read reversals unless when i try to flip one up i get yelled at that no it's supposed to be in reverse that's what happened that's when i said i'm getting yelled at geez that, that's what it was leave this one upside down so i'm reading it to you that way the energy is still present it's just got something wrong with it again this in the upright this is a powerful connection as far as you see it this is what you could have believed was divine masculine divine feminine divine counterparts you could have believed this is the one for me i'm supposed to be with this person at some point but with everything that's happened it's like you see the truth of it you're speaking the truth of it and you're severing the, the concept of that because it's coming out in the reverse this is the opposite of that this is not a divine connection this is a distorted as fuck connection a divine masculine would never keep secrets from you a divine masculine would never get you trapped in your own mind creating like a mental prison of your own thoughts a divine masculine would never be giving to you and someone else and starting up a passionate new beginning and following his wand as if it's the most important thing a divine masculine wouldn't betray you and stab you in the back and just the fact that that shit has occurred is 100 percent proof that this is not indeed a divine masculine or divine feminine that you're dealing with and even if you are divine is all get out getting in a connection with a distorted person automatically makes the connection distorted so this is definitely distorted energy which is why you're not fully happy with the idea of getting back with them you probably weren't fully happy when you were with them which is probably one of the things you're thinking about as you're making this decision three of swords heartbreak and sadness from a third energy if that represents another person no way in hell a divine masculine or a divine feminine does this to you so this is you seeing the truth of the matter uh, again king and queen of swords like the pinnacle of the truth suit the pinnacle of like making decisions and cutting off the stuff that's not meant for you pinnacle of conscious mind being smart and logical and rational says that this is not a divine connection four of wands is stability this is aries energy of stability of the home life stability of the family life stability of the connection that you're in these four of wands represent 11 11 which isn't just the number on my shirt this is the number of manifesting if you look at the magician card he is the Mac Daddy Master Manifester. He has all four aces on the table in front of him. I've seen the Ace of Wands, the Ace of Cups, the Ace of Pentacles two or three times, and I've got the Ace of Swords right here in the overall energy of the reading. You literally have all four aces. The aces are the four ones of the suit, 11-11. It's represented here. So you are powerful at manifesting this is a celebration either of the home and the family like a wedding an engagement like a graduation a baby shower some kind of celebration of the home or the family or this is a celebration of the thing you've been trying to manifest actually appearing in the physical 3d reality i don't have the three of wands out here there is no energy out here of you waiting on the thing you're trying to manifest to appear what's laying right next to this here it is manifesting it ace of cups ace of wands so either you have manifested somehow this distorted ass person coming back to you so you could cut them off permanently or what you have manifested is a new beginning in love and emotions and a passionate new beginning somewhere else and this person is just now trying to come back as you're in the midst of this new thing Final card to clarify the Queen of Swords is the Queen of Cups. 
This is two-thirds Cancer energy, one-third Gemini energy. So you definitely qualify as the Queen of Cups. This is the most intuitive queen in the deck. She is very in touch with her intuition. She is very in touch with her emotions. She wants to give her love and emotions to someone. So this is you probably still having some emotions for this person, which is probably the whole reason why, again, I'm seeing this internal conflict in your desires as your first card. A person's first card is always the most important. And for you, it's being internally conflicted about the heartbreak and a new beginning and taking time to contemplate all of this here. So you probably still have emotions for them, but right next to it is the King of Swords. It's in the same column as the Queen of Swords. So what your emotions are telling you are probably not lining up with what common sense and your your conscious logical analytical mind is telling you this is like a conflict between your head and your heart which is another meaning for this five of wands internal conflict a conflict between your head and your heart your heart's telling you one thing your head is trying to go hey be smart about this and look at the truth and the facts of what you can see now below that queen is nothing there's nothing that fits with it's dead and over with and it's been put to a screeching halt. I mean, this is like complete, complete ending right here and nothing continues that story probably because you've decided to sever it even though you have love and emotions. It could be you decide to sever it because you realize how distorted the connection was with this person and what you want is the real lover's energy, not this distorted version of it. What you want is actually stable, happy home life and family life and a stable commitment and a stable connection with someone, possibly with someone new. And you want to be able to pour your love and emotions into them without taking the risk of getting hurt. It, it really looks like you have a new opportunity that has presented itself already. And if it hasn't presented itself already, this is probably a test from the universe to see if you learned your lesson or not. And if you pass the test and prove that you learned your lesson from this person, the new thing is gonna come in. It just doesn't have room yet because this person hasn't fallen completely away like they should. The connection is dead though. At least from what your energy is telling me. Scoot this over a little bit and get us some more room so we can take a look at your person's energy. Because in their energy for October 2022, we have the Four of Coins, Four of Pentacles, the Ten of Pentacles, and the Queen of Pentacles. First thing I notice here, like the overall energy is a pentacle, and all three of your person's cards are pentacles. And I still have that Queen of Pentacles and the Seven of Pentacles staring at me on the bottom of this deck that I just clarified your Queen of Swords with. Pentacles seem to be important for your person. Physical, tangible, material possessions and resources seem to be important. This could be a case. This could be a case that you are married. I've seen the Hierophant two or three times. Ten of Pentacles is central to their energy. Ten of Pentacles is in the shared energy affecting you both. I have the Justice card here, which in addition to like balancing something out or making something right, can also represent the justice system, the legal system. I've got a Queen of Pentacles that I've seen repeatedly, but still no king, still no working together as equals. There's no you're physically together here. This could be a case of where you got divorced or are in the process of getting a divorce and your person is either still wanting to hold on tightly to you and not let go of you because they don't want to lose you. This could be a case of them trying to hold on to their material possessions, their money, their houses, you know, physical assets and resources that they don't want to let go of. It could be that. That could be what they're stuck in their head grinding about. It could be what they have fear, worry, and anxiety about. What am I going to do if I lose half of my stuff to Gemini here? It could be that. It could be that is why they're wanting to put the work in to, to balance this out and fix it, to balance it out and fix it and like re-spark the passion and the desire. It could be that. 
But yeah, this is Capricorn energy of holding on tightly to something and not wanting to let go of it. Whether that's you or other stuff we're about to find out. Here. Tell me more about this Four of Pentacles. Why is that here for Gemini's romantic person of interest? October 2022. Okay. Okay. I got you. Well, bottom of the deck, there's the Hierophant, again, Taurus Major Arcana. So again, this is either a marriage that looks like it might be coming apart and they want to save it and it looks like a piece of you does, but ultimately you decide, no, I don't want to save it. It could be that. It could be that they're trying to hold on to the marriage. It could be that they're trying to hold on to you and not let go of you and get this commitment here. Try to balance this out to get the commitment. If you're not married, you could have been living together. You could have been going down the route in a connection that had some strength to it. And it looked like you were going in the direction of living together. And maybe that didn't happen. Right under that Hierophant card, Page of Swords. This is news and messages and communications speaking the truth on something this can also sometimes because it's a page and the page is the least developed of the court cards it can represent an immature energy so this can be like immature communication or like premature like poorly thought out like they said it before they had thought it through it could be that this can even be an energy of someone who's trying to learn something and trying to figure something out trying to figure out how to hold on to this commitment and not lose it ah <sighs> And it looks like they might be getting a taste of their own medicine because now I got that Knight of Wands energy again, that wishy-washy in and out, back and forth energy. At the beginning, when I saw this, it definitely felt like your person. But then at some point going through your energy, it started to feel like that's how they treated you. And now this is the energy that you have picked up because a piece of you wants this. And then a piece of you changes your mind and pulls back the other way. And goes Queen of Swords mode instead and cuts this connection off. Queen of Swords was the last card in your energy. And here we are again looking at those two people that used to be together cards. Okay. Clarifying this Four of Pentacles, I got the High Priestess, the World, the Magician, and the King of Cups. This is very very interesting here the high priestess this is she who knows i said when i was telling you about the queen of swords this is she who knows the truth well this is she who knows period she knows everything she sits in front of the veil of consciousness she knows everything she sees everything she has access to everything that you and i as humans don't have access to problem with her she don't always tell us everything sometimes there's stuff we're just not meant to know as humans sometimes there's stuff we don't need to know until it's time for us to know, at which point she clues us in through intuition, gut feelings, signs, synchronicities, dreams with messages in them, like visions, things like that. In a love reading, she can represent that at least from your person's perspective, this connection with you is deeper than just something physical. It's deeper than just something emotional. It can be a very powerful connection as far as they're concerned. Now, she is the divine feminine energy of the tarot deck. She's the first feminine character, and she is the source of all love and emotions and intuition, the source of all the water throughout the entire tarot deck. I'm getting ahead of myself and skipping a card, but they also got the magician. So this is card one of the major arcana, card two. He is the divine masculine of the tarot deck. So divine feminine, divine masculine, these are legit divine counterparts pretty much the same energy that's on the lover's card here. Now, in your energy, it's upside down because you see the truth that it's distorted. Your person is holding on tightly to this idea that this is a divine connection that we are supposed to be together. They're holding on to that idea. What's, sent, what's in the center of those two cards, when I said I'm skipping a card, I skipped the world. This is the final card of the Major Arcana. It represents completions. This is the ending of one cycle and the beginning of a new cycle here. That is directly between this magician 
and this high priestess as it lays on the table. The cycle between these two is complete. And your person isn't wanting to see that. They're holding on to it anyway. Trying to balance it out. This feels like a case of like, you did some dumb shit, buddy. You shouldn't have done some dumb shit. Now it's too late to think about it and make up for it. It's already done. Final card to clarify this. This also is the Mac Daddy Master Manifester of the deck, which tells me your person's actively trying to manifest the ending of this cycle between you to be over with, like the ending aspect to be over and start a new cycle where there's nothing between us anymore. King of, King of Cups is either Pisces or Scorpio energy. This is the counterpart to this Queen of Cups. Now, when I'm looking directly across in the rows, they're trying to manifest you back. But when I'm looking directly across the row from where the king is, it's that empty spot underneath the queen here. The next, the next thing is the ten of swords and death, saying this connection is over. It's time for this connection to fall away so that something better can take its place. The new opportunity for you can fit in. The new blessing for you. Your person's not wanting that. They're wanting to hold on to this. And they're probably stuck in their head trying to figure out how, how to balance this out and make it right. Now they're willing to put in the work. Where before they were, they were very wishy-washy and non-committal here. They were, that's part of the problem. And they're probably having fear, worry, and anxiety about the uncertainty of, am I going to be able to hold on to Gemini or not? This is someone who is the pretty much the opposite type decision maker of this King of Swords that you got. This is about using your mind, your smarts, what I can see, the truth right in front of me to decide, pushing my emotions to the side. doesn't matter how I feel. doesn't matter how you feel. What matters is the truth, and I'm going to decide based on that. This is the kind of person that throws logic and reason and truth out the window, and they decide not based on what's factual in front of them, but based on what they feel. And your person feels like holding on to you. They feel emotions for you still. They still feel like this is a powerful connection. Which, at, at a point, it probably was. But if they feel that way, then why did they do what they did? That, that's, that's the part that rubs me the wrong way. There wouldn't be this justice card out here if you didn't do something unfair and unjust. There would be no need to balance something if it was already in balance and you let it stay in balance instead of giving to two and starting passionate new beginnings. Sounds like a case of a person who has shit the bed and does not want to lay in it and they want you to change the sheets for them and let everything be cool again. Central to their energy is the Ten of Pentacles. This is maximum stability, abundance, and prosperity. This is Virgo energy. This is the combining together of two people, two families, assets, resources, Combining lives together, living together, and what do we got? Yeah, and death just jumped off the table. That came to an end. That is dead and over with, and your person doesn't seem to accept that. Tell me about this Ten of Pentacles. Why is that here for Gemini's person, please? Let's get two more for that, please. Thank you. Where'd you go? Let's get one more. This Ten of Pentacles for Gemini person. Oh, now there it is. Yeah. Again, too little, too late, man. Bottom of the deck, the Hierophant. Again, Taurus Major Arcana. If this doesn't scream married, then there's nothing in the deck that does. There's three cards to me that would indicate marriage. All three of them are out here. The Hierophant's not physically on the table, though. These two are physically on the table. I keep seeing the Hierophant showing up either as the bottom of the deck or one card, two cards down in the story on the bottom of the deck. So this whole idea of commitment is underlying everything. Your person wanting to balance it out. Now, if your person and you were not married and living together, that's they're wanting to go to that level now. They're wanting to take it to that level now. 
and they're wanting to do that fast. Knight of Swords is the fastest moving knight in the whole deck. It's about rushing forward and speaking the truth. It's about rushing forward and taking some rapid, decisive action on something. This is not the person who comes rushing in fast and then has to think about what to do or read the instruction manual to figure out what to do. This is the person that doesn't think about it. They just come in and they do it. They don't even think about it while they're doing it. They do it and they're out. And so this is someone who doesn't think things through first. They don't think about it while they're doing it. They don't think about it until after the fact. Could be what got them into trouble. Yes, and they're going backwards. They're going from the night to the page here. They're like, ah, backwards a step. And then to the Knight of Wands, where they're wishy-washy and they change their mind. They, they could be trying to figure out how to move very quickly on taking this commitment with you to the next level. And it could be that they're running into this uh, not fully committed energy from you now. Or it could be that they still have that energy underlying them and they're slowly regressing into it. They're going from this very decisive, I know what I want and I'm doing it, to like, well, now I need to figure out what I want to, oh wait, I'm pulling back and going a different way because now I want something different. Could be telling me that that's what happened with them. It could be telling me that that is still there inside of them, underlying the surface of what you're seeing when they approach you could actually be telling me both of those things at the same time. To clarify this Ten of Pentacles, I got the Two of Pentacles, Justice again, and finally I got the Three of Pentacles. So this Two of Pentacles is Capricorn energy. Twos are decisions. So this is a decision that they're trying to make where they're weighing the pros and cons. They're, they got something on the scale looking at like, do I or don't I? Should I or shouldn't I? Can we balance this out and get back together? Can we not? Can we put the work in on this and fix it? Can we not? Will Gemini take me back or not? You know, and there's the uncertainty around all of that and the fear, worry, and anxiety around that uncertainty. This is like back and forth, can't make up my mind energy here. Next, I have Justice, which again is the shared energy affecting you both. The Libra Major Arcana card. It's about doing the right, fair, just thing. Tells me something unfair, unjust happened, or why would it be here in both decks? And that thing needs balanced out. Also, right next to it is the world, which is the ending of a cycle, the beginning of a new cycle. I think this is your person not wanting to accept the ending of the cycle between the two of you, and the beginning of you having a cycle without them, and them having a cycle without you. They're not wanting to accept the ending of that. They're wanting to balance it back out and try to fix it. Three of Pentacles is next. This is Capricorn energy of teamwork, collaboration, working together as equals to build something of value. What you would be working together as equals to build is that Ten of Pentacles that's in the shared energy. The Ten of Pentacles, that is the card I am clarifying. And again, the King and the Queen of Pentacles would do this working together thing. I have the Queen out here. We've seen the queen on the bottom of this clarifying deck a few times. Still haven't seen the king anywhere. Notice on this card though, in a standard tarot deck like, like one of these, it shows three people on the card working together as equals to build something. And here, there's one person on the card. That tells me, along with the fact the king still isn't out here, that you we're building things together yourself, like not with them, by yourself. They weren't showing up the same way you were showing up when this was an actual committed connection. And now they're wanting to balance that out. This, this Two of Pentacles is a card of balance too, just like the Six of Pentacles and just like the Justice card. But this is more about trying to main, them trying to maintain their balance or get their balance back once it's been thrown off. It's not saying they're in balance, it's trying to get it back because it's been thrown off. Them trying to rebalance the scales with you, fix the ending here, and now they're showing this energy of, I'm trying to manifest you back, and this time it will be us working together as equals. This time it will be equal give and take. But I've got, again, nothing under it 
nothing sitting next to the King of Cups that they're showing up as. And when I follow it over, there's another gap in that Ten of Swords and the Death card again. So something still isn't right. I feel like a gap between what they're showing you and what's below the surface of that. Final card for them, Queen of Pentacles again. This is the wife, the mother. This is the person I'm building my world around, my physical life around. We're working together as equals to build this Ten of Pentacles, living together, being in a, a solid, stable commitment. So this is you that's showing up in their energy. They're wanting to hold on to you and this idea of being together. They're holding on to the connection even though it's something's bad off with it. Tell me about the Queen of Pentacles. Why is that here? The Gemini's person, please. Let's get two more. Bottom of the deck, Ace of Pentacles. A practical, tangible, physical, 3D reality, real world opportunity presenting itself here. The seed with the potential to grow into the Ten of Pentacles. It's going to take work, time, effort, energy to get from the seed to the Ten. This is about you, Gemini. This is your energy showing up. Your person either has become aware of or is about to become aware of that you have some opportunity or they're trying to present an opportunity to you to balance all this out. It's very possible that you have an opportunity. I saw that in your side a couple of different ways. Six of Swords, that also showed up on your side of the table of you moving away from some painful thing leaving the burdens of it behind and carrying forward into the future, going toward what you want, carrying forward with you the lessons that that painful thing taught you. Two of Wands, there's your decision point again showing up. Yeah, which world leads you to the world that you really want? Three of Cups, this is being reunited and celebrating, but it's also three cups of love in the picture. Queen of Pentacles, that's... This is your choice on whether or not you can reconcile with this person. They want that, but the choice is yours. I believe they have presented you with an opportunity, but at the same time, I think you probably also have another opportunity somewhere else right now. Yeah, Knight of Cups. This person's offered you a cup of love and they're trying to take actions in your direction. But I think you also have that concept going on from someone that's not this person. Eight of Cups right under that. This is a card of Pisces energy of detachment. Emotionally detaching. Physically detaching. I see this emotionally detached decision maker. I see two energies of an ending here. Something dying and falling away. You still have your emotions. You're still in touch with them. You still want to give them. You still want to be in a loving connection. But this looks like you're detaching from this person and choosing to walk away from the eight cups that they can give you because those eight cups are the best they're ever going to be able to give you. And you deserve the ninth cup. You deserve the tenth cup. And this is you detaching from these eight cups that they give you and choosing to go down a new path toward your own happiness, your own wish fulfillment, toward the, the love connection that you believe exists and that you want. Yeah, you're taking the leap of faith on that. You're just going for it, the fool. Not needing to know what the outcome is going to be or what even all the steps are to get there. I'm just going to go for it and I'll figure it out as I move along. I think that leaves your person in the hanged man. It leaves them feeling stuck. Like, wait a minute. It could be that they're waiting on you to answer them about the love offer that they made to you. And you haven't answered them and they're feeling stuck waiting on it. And then once you tell them what your decision is, they're stuck in what I'm about to show you here. To clarify that Queen of Pentacles, Four of Pentacles, which is the very first card in their energy. Five of Cups, Six of Cups. 
So this Four of Pentacles, again, is the first card in their energy. That's the most important energy in the reading for them. That energy of holding on tightly to something and not wanting to let go of it. <clears throat> Same here, Capricorn energy. They don't want to let go of you. They don't want to lose you. At best, you're one foot in and one foot out with them. Like, can't make up your mind still. I feel like intuitively, you know what's what to do here. Intuitively, you realize directly across from that in your energy is that the lovers is in reverse. This is not a divine connection where it never would have went the way it did. This is a distorted as fuck connection. Doesn't mean that your person's an asshole. Doesn't mean that they're a terrible person. It just means that they have some stuff they're holding on to inside of them that is distorted, that is out of balance, that needs balancing out. They need to be going into hermit mode and figuring themselves out. And I haven't seen the hermit anywhere. I saw the hanged man, which is looking external for why is this stuff. Not looking inside themselves for why did this go wrong? Why do, why am, what am I doing that causes this to happen? They're looking outside of themselves. The things and the people and the circumstances outside of them that caused this. It's like playing the blame game. It wasn't my fault. It was your fault. Or it was that person's fault. Or it was my job's fault. Or it was, it was something else that wasn't them. At least from their energy. <clears throat> but they're definitely wanting to hold on tight to you. Even though this connection is like not balanced. It's not. It, they're struggling to hold on to it and regain the balance of it. And I think when you give them your decision or maybe speak the truth to them about the opportunity that you have and I'm, I'm leaving this behind and I'm moving forward toward my opportunity here. When you speak that truth to them, it puts them in the Five of Cups. They could potentially already be in the Five of Cups before that happens if that's what's going on for you. This is Scorpio energy of sadness and remorse about the past it's about them being focused on the three cups that have been spilled all the love and emotions that got spilled and were wasted all the time effort and energy that was spilled and wasted there's still two cups in the background behind them meaning they still feel a connection with you but that's not where their focus is their focus is on the past that's what this card really means. It's like whatever a person focuses on literally determines the emotions they experience. So if they focus on the past, they're going to feel what they felt in the past. If they focus on something that is that they've lost, they're going to feel the loss. If they focus on something that they think's missing from their life, they're going to feel that gap in their life. So this is about whatever they focus on is the emotions they're going to feel and they're going to be feeling negative emotions here. Right next to that is justice. They have some stuff about themselves that they need to balance out. They need to balance out where their focus goes for sure because that's probably what led them to the wishy-washy in and out stupid shit that they did here. That's what led to the unfair, unjust things that caused the ending of this cycle with you and the beginning of a new cycle where there's separation between the two of you and they still have emotions for you and you probably still have some emotions for them but you recognize the truth that this connection is distorted not divine and you can't balance that out because it's not your distortion it's their distortion and i see zero evidence that they're even looking at themselves for what needs adjusted they're looking external so they're still not in a state where they're even close to getting balance here they're still deluding themselves. They're creating an illusion for themselves. They're hiding that stuff in the dark from themselves. The final card for your person here is the Six of Cups, which is the next card in the sequence from this Five of Cups, also Scorpio energy. So we're having progression happen here, I guess, if you could call it that. This is sadness and remorse about the past. This is the past it's thinking about the past reminiscing about the past thinking about the good old days and the way things used to be between the two of you it can represent someone from the past making a comeback it could represent them doing a lot of thinking about the past when you were there by yourself working on this and they weren't present the way that you that they should have been where they were off on their own doing something else creating what they wanted to manifest what their will desired Again, the last column here, the last row, 
has this King of Cups in the first column, but the next two columns, just empty space. Back to your side, empty space and an ending in death. So to me, this looks like the connection is dead and your person doesn't want to accept that or face that. And they're trying like hell to balance this out with you. But what they're doing is too little, too late. You've already seen the truth of the connection and potentially have a brand new opportunity with someone else. And it looks like you're leaving this connection behind, moving away from the pain that it caused you and carrying those lessons that you learned forward with you into this new opportunity.